Just as a disclaimer, this really isn't a how-to on getting your Core 1 done in 40 hours or less. It's really the length of time that it took me to study for the exam over a two-week period while taking weekends off. More exactly, it was around four hours a day for 10 days. This video is about how I approach the topics and area of study for the Core 1, and some more information about me. Unlike Ali, I'm coming from a background that has nothing to do with information technology or cybersecurity. So to start, since I have yet to be introduced on the channel, my name is Bran and I'd really like to welcome you to my first video on Learn Cybersecurity. A little more information on who I am and what's been going on in my life these past few years is that I went to Lehman College and obtained my bachelor's degree in business with a focus in finance. So my background is mainly in finance and most of my earlier employers are either customer service or finance focused. However, as I continue to do financial based work more consistently, either being a consultant or helping to create important financial documents, I realized that it doesn't really appeal to me as much as I thought it would when I was still in school. Honestly, I love finance. I think it's extremely important and crucial that people understand their own personal finances and gain at least a basic understanding of financial literacy. I think that it's something that should be taught earlier in life, especially that once we become college age, around 17 to 18, you can take out loans that could financially ruin you for the rest of your life. Luckily, this didn't really happen to me. I have loans, but they're not the worst I've seen among my peers, nor even my family. The CUNY system, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the City University of New York really helped out in this regard. I was able to get a traditional four-year degree for some of the cheapest out-of-pocket costs available in the US. After graduating from Lehman College, I started really preparing to enter the career field that I chose, but found great difficulty in securing a position. At the same time, I found myself wanting to leave New York City. It's not a terrible place to live, but it's one I've lived my whole life. And honestly, it really took a big toll on me at a point. That's because it's a hard city to live in if you're just making minimum wage or even a bit above it. New York City's minimum wage is one of the highest in the entire US, set around $15 an hour, but the cost to live in the city is very high. So soon after graduating college, and unfortunately now in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, I was already set to move to Oregon. For a bit, I let the COVID-19 pandemic get in the way, and at a point, I just couldn't let it get in the way any longer. So yes, I do fall into the statistical category of people fleeing from NYC during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, it was planned to happen regardless and the cause itself wasn't necessarily coronavirus. Now that I was in my new home state of Oregon, I applied myself once more and still found great difficulty in finding career-oriented positions once again. However, it's important to recognize that the common theme throughout all of this is still the coronavirus pandemic, which I know has affected the career prospects for many, not just myself. When my best friend Allie returned to college through a cybersecurity program with Western Governors University, which she has a video on the channel about, link in the description below, she really encouraged me to pursue some IT-focused certifications. The first we did together was the Idle Version 4 Foundation, which we were both able to pass in about two weeks. Next, we both started studying for our CompTIA A+, which Allie finished a lot faster this time around because she has background in IT, already being in a career position in the field and already having her Security Plus, which I could only assume from my perspective is a more difficult certification. So the way I approach studying, and it is one I recommend if you, like me, are completely new to these topics and disciplines, is the idea to not assume what you know. What I mean by this is, yes, I may know what a USB is, I may know what it looks like, but I didn't know things like the varying throughputs of different generations of USB, or as another example, that the color strips on USBs even had a meaning. If you're just starting, it's okay to not know what a SATA cable looks like, or even what SATA means. You will learn it if you have the dedication and discipline to do so. So I approached the exam from two angles. The first was to force myself through things I already knew, just in case there were things I didn't know. Again, this goes back to the idea to not assume what you already know. This isn't necessarily the fastest way to approach it, but in my opinion, if you're just starting out, it's definitely the safest. Two. Use many resources. I wouldn't just focus on one resource. There are so many free and cheap resources available that it makes sense to use as much as you can. So I use Mike Mayer's video program, which I paid for, along with Professor Messer's video program, which is free, and Mike Mayer's A plus certification passport book, which I also paid for. Basically, what I recognized is what one doesn't cover, the other will fill in the gaps and vice versa. Some examples of this is that in Mike Myers' training videos for Core 1, and it's some of many examples because I took thorough notes on both programs, is that he makes no mention of SSO, which is single sign-on, DMZ, which is demilitarized zone, nor does he really go through the 17 ports we need to know in great detail. He mentions them all and then heavily focuses on a handful like SMTP, POP3, and IMAP. 
Professor Messer, on the other hand, goes through the ports in detail. In fact, he has a single video that goes through all of them in a very succinct and easy manner. Over the course of the series, he does mention DMZ, and he does mention SSO. And Mike Myers' book, on the other hand, goes into detail on all of these topics. Which is why I say use many resources, don't just stick to one. It may take longer, but I feel like you will more likely pass the exam on the first try using many resources instead of just one. This is because if anything is left out from the resource you are using, you won't really know about it. Another really important thing to remember is that no one is there to hold you accountable for studying. And all of these resources, guides, programs, videos, etc., none of it will work if you don't use them. You are co-creating value and outcomes when you buy into a program or invest time into them. You won't get the outcome you want if you don't put in your own effort. Obviously, not everyone can have an awesome friend like Ali to hold them accountable for taking exams. So one of my recommendations is that if you don't have a friend, colleague, or mentor to keep you accountable for studying, you can use the exam for accountability. What I mean by this is, buy the exam and schedule it. You could also buy an exam voucher that is expiring soon to put yourself under pressure to work. However, you will lose out if you don't take the exam by the expiration date. I really only recommend this option loosely because it can cause a lot of unneeded stress, not to mention you might find yourself having to take the exam at an unfavorable time. If you are a working professional, even more so. This is something you should really take at the pace you feel is right. My other recommendation, which is a bit of self-promotion, is to join our Learn Cybersecurity Help Desk Bootcamp, which is launching soon. Ali made a great intro video on it, link in the description below, and you will get a lot of accountability from us helping you. However, if you have to take the exam on your own, I really recommend taking very good notes. I know this seems like a very basic recommendation, and it, it is, really, but you will remember more from what is being written down than just listening to something. At least that's how it works for me. You can listen to Mike Meyer's video program, you can listen to Professor Messer's video program, you can listen to whoever's other video program is out there, but if only 30% of the information is retained, then the point is kind of moot. As a roundup, here are the key points I think you should take away from this video. 1. Study all of it if you're new. Leave no stone unturned. However, if you are more confident, feel free to skip over what you know. It will in fact be faster, though I will say you may end up missing things that you thought you knew, but actually didn't. 2. Use many resources. I can't stress this enough. The more resources you use, the more likely you'll pass the exam on the first try. This includes flashcards, study guides, notes, and practice exams. If you need to make any of your own, I suggest you do so. Three, write very thorough notes on what you don't yet know or understand. It will be a great reference point to come back to later. My notes on the core one alone took around 30 pages front and back of loose leaf, though I do admit I write pretty large. Four, this isn't what I mentioned during the video, but study for your exam quickly. What I mean is, take no more than two months to sit for your exam. If you aren't refreshing every day, or if you have a poor memory, a lot of the information will leave your brain before you take the test. This means you are going to waste a lot of time restudying old material. However, in the case you need to, this is why I suggest, as in point three, you take great notes. You'll have a great reference to look back on later. That about wraps up this video here. Please stay tuned for the next portion of the video where I will talk about my exam experience sitting for the core one. I'll talk about the cost so far for taking the first exam, and I'm going to be giving you some exam preparation tips. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.